Welcome to this tutorial to the RGB LEDs WS2812Bs, which are also called nanopixels from Adafruit. And as you can see here, I have four of them put onto this PC, uh, onto this breadboard, and I have already running some sample code. Usually, you find them on a reel like this as well, and then you have a strip. I will show you how I made these uh, custom-made PCBs and how you control them. If you already got a strip like this, you can skip to the programming part. So let's get started with this. So here are the things you will need. First of all, you will need your LEDs. They come pre-packaged in this kind of uh, reel. I will show you one. Close up. There yeah, you can see it now. We have four pins on the LED. And I will blend in a schematic now. As you also can see, there is a little triangle on the ship itself. It's very hard to see on the camera, but over here there is also this triangle, which you can find in the schematic. It's very useful to orient yourself with this triangle. What I also used was this kind of puff board. You can see it has a lot of holes in it and there are copper traces over here. And it's quite a standard thing. And some pin headers of course. We want to put it in our breadboard. I cut off a 3 by 4 square from this puff board. And when I soldered the LED to the perf board like this. On the sides with a thickness of 3 you can put in your pin headers in the end. Like this. So that you have 3 pins on this thing. You will connect 2 of the pins, the outermost pins, to the pins on the ship. And then you do it on the other side as well. So I used 6 pins, but you can get away with using 4 pins. But for alignment purposes it is too better to keep the middle pin. You can pull out the middle pin as well if you want to. To cut out the PCBs I used a normal cutter knife. I scratched along where I wanted to cut it and then I just broke it off. You can see it is quite eff efficient actually. But you can use other tools as well. So let's, let's get to it then. Okay, I'm finished. I didn't want to record the soldering because it's quite unhandy to film while you solder. This is the final PCB. As you can see here, it's quite tricky to solder it. But it's, it came out quite nice. What you have to look out for is getting these pins parallel so that they fit into your breadboard. Apart from that, check out for this little triangle so that you have your orientation right at the end. Now let's build the breadboard. And here we are already. I used the Arduino Nano to control the LEDs. I used one resistor here to protect my pin with which I control the LEDs. I also used some capacitors with 100 microfarad, but this is way over the top. You just need like 100 nanofarad. You can see that there is a connection from my Arduino, 5 volts to the rail, and a ground connection to the rail as well. What I did next is this jello jumper wire goes to the direct to the data input of the first pin. The data output of the first pin goes to the data input of the next pin. These are the S-shaped wires over here and they run between the PCBs. I did this with all of the LEDs, so now every LED is connected to the next one. The last data output does not have to be utilized. You can just leave it blank. So let's get to some code now. To program the LEDs I used this past LED software library. 
I will put the link into the description and you just have to unzip it and pack it in your Arduino folder. As you can see I wrote a very simple code. First you will have to define an array of LEDs. Usually it has the length of the LEDs you use, but you can use less. Then you initialize the LEDs in the setup code. This can be done automatically as well. In the loop I define HSV values, which are then shifted by time. There is also a shift between LEDs, so that the color moves smoothly from LED to LED. Using this software library it is very easy to define the color of each individual LED. Take a look into its documentation and start coding right now. So let's have a look at the LEDs once more. I will turn off the light now. So that you can see them better. This is not the full brightness because the full brightness of these LEDs can be blinding. It's really really bright. You also have to pay attention that you can deliver at least 60 milliamps pro LED in your design if you run them on full brightness. If you don't run them on full brightness you can get away with less. But that depends on your application. Have fun coding and see you again.